Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at complex trinomials. So that's trinomials where you look at them and there is a number in front of the the x squared part in the a the a part, the a value. <laughs> this being a, b, the 5 being b and the negative 2 being the c part. If you see a number up here, it means you have to factor things a little bit differently. A lot of math teachers teach what's called decomposition. I'm just going to show you an alternative to using decomposition. It's fun. It's uh, You get to draw a box, or you could call it a window. That looks like this. And my students tend to like this, just because it's kind of quick and easy. And here's how you do it. So when you want to factor one of these, you take the first term, which is 3x squared, and you put it in the top left corner. The 3x squared, the top left corner is always going to be positive. If we happen to have had a negative here, I would have factored it out and put this in brackets and changed all of the signs. So this, this box here is always going to be positive. Okay. Now you take the last term and you write it right here. So there's the first and the last terms. Now what you have to do, just like in decomposition, you have to come up with two numbers that if you multiply them, you will get 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So you multiply 3 times negative 2 and you get negative 6. And we have to come up with two numbers that if you added them, you would get the middle term. Look back up here, the middle term is 5. So you need two numbers that multiply to make negative 6 and add to make 5. If you want, you can push pause right now so that you can come up with the answers. Um, if you try 2 times 3, you will see that it works temporarily and then it won't work. So I'm just going to skip ahead and tell you that 6 and 1. And 6 times 1 is 6. We need a negative 6. And you have to decide, do I make the negative, do I make the 6 negative or the 1? It makes more sense to make this one negative because 6 plus negative 1 is also 5. So we know 6 and negative 1 are the two numbers that you would put in the remaining empty boxes here. Isn't that fun? By the way, it doesn't matter where you put them. You can put the 6 here or here. What would you pick? Hmm, can I read your mind? Uh, oh boy. Some of you may have said put it here, so you might think I'm reading your mind. I'll admit I got lucky. Don't forget to put the x with it because it's the middle term we're trying to get and 6x minus x or minus 1x will give us 5x. So make sure you include that little negative sign here. Now here's something to note. Mm, yeah, when you're using the box method, if you have a negative sign, that means when you're coming up with what, I, what I'm about to show you, when you come up with a common factor, if there's a negative on the outside, it has to go either here or here. Let me explain. Let's start by looking at 3x squared and the negative x. Can you come up with a common factor between these two? Well, the only common factor between them is x. And when you're coming up with a common factor, go with the sign of the box nearest it. So here it's positive, so just, just put out a, a positive x. The 6x here and the negative 2. Don't put a negative sign out, out here because this 6x, the, the one closest, is positive. So in other words, just think, what 6 and negative 2, what's the greatest common factor between those two? And you'll tell me, hey, it's 2. Okay, that's fine and dandy. We're done that part. Now, you do the same thing, but you do it vertically right here. What's 3x squared and 6x? Take the common factor between these two. 3, and there's an x. And it's positive because the closest box is positive. Now look at these two, negative x and negative 2. Well, first of all, because there's a negative in the box closest to this spot, it, the answer is going to be negative, just to keep things working. And the only common factor that can come out of these two, because there really isn't one, the only thing that could divide x and divide 2 is 1. And guess what, people? We are done. I know you won't, you might not believe it. If you watch the decomposition method, you'll see we had to do a lot of work to come up with the answer. But guess what? All you do is write this down right here. And then you write this part down, put it in brackets, and it's x plus 2 right here. 
And if you look at the last video I made, let's see if I can, the last video I made where we did this using decomposition, after all of this work using decomposition, we came up with x plus 2, 3x minus 1, which is what we have right here. x plus 2, 3x minus 1. It doesn't matter what order, as long as you have these two in brackets, you're good to go. So, in my opinion, this way used less space, it was quicker, and it was kind of fun right, drawing this little box or this window. I should call it the window method. Now, just to make sure you got this, I have two more examples to try, and let's see if we can do this. And if you want to push pause, you can, just to make sure you're really catching on. So you start by drawing a box, and by the way, when you're doing these questions, always start by making sure there's no common factor to begin with. And I see a 6, a 7, and a 5. There's no common factor amongst these. So I can keep going with this box method right here. Now if you remember, we're going to write the first term right here. You write the last term right there. And then multiply these two. 6 times 5 is 30, and it's a negative 30. So what numbers multiply to make negative 30? but add to make the middle term, look over here, it's the 7. And we just finished a video on the decomposition method, so we recall that 10 times 3 was going to be the best one in this situation. 10 times 3. And it would be a negative 3, because we need a negative 30, and if you go 10 plus negative 3, you get 7. So 10 and negative 3 happen to be the best two numbers right here. Okay, so I'm going to write, hmm, this time should I write the 10 here instead? Would that be okay? And don't forget the x, okay? It goes along with it. And over here we're going to put the negative 3, don't forget the x. Okay, and uh, I see, I'm going to move this all over a little bit. I'll move it down there, because we need this space to do the box method. All right. So here we go. Let's look for the common factors between 6x squared and 10x. Hmm, what number could divide 6 and 10? Well, 2 would be the only one I can think of, and there's an x in both of them, so let's take the x out. This one here, remember there's a negative sign in the box closest to this. So we're going to put the negative sign first, and can 3 and 5, do they have a common factor? They do not. So I'm just going to write that famous 1. The 1 can always be put here if there's no common factor between the two. Then do it vertically. I see we could take out a 3. By the way, it's a positive 3 because this box is positive right here, the closest one, and there's an x. And we have 10x and negative 5, so the best number we can pull out of those would be 5. It would be positive because this box is positive. And there's no x, so it's just 5. And guess what, people? Once again, we are done this question. It's just so quick. We have 3x plus 5. We got that from here. okay? And then we take this one right here and write it in brackets right here, 2x minus 1. Let's go and see if the other video that I just finished doing had that same answer. 3x plus 5, 2x minus 1. 3x plus 5, 2x minus 1. Man, this is pretty fun and pretty quick. Have I convinced you yet that the box method is more fun or funner? I'm allowed to say funner because math teachers aren't supposed to be on top of their correct grammar. Let's do one more question together. And remember the very first step, people. If we didn't do this first step, it, none of this would work. You have to look and see, is there a common factor to begin with? If there is, then take that common factor out right now, and there is. You can factor each one of these by 2, leaving us with 5x squared minus 11x plus 2. See, if you get a question like this now, you won't be fooled. Your math teacher will not have fooled you. Draw your box, because we're now ready, and take the very first term, which is 5x squared, take the very last term, which is 2. Think what numbers can multiply. 5 times 2 is 10. What numbers can multiply to make 10? And add up to make the middle term, which is negative 11. What numbers can multiply to make 10, but add to make negative 11? 5 times 2 is 10, but 5 plus 2 is not 11. It's going to have to be 10 and 1. And it would have to be both of these being negative. 
because negative 10 plus negative 1 would equal negative 11. So our two numbers in these boxes, and it doesn't matter where you put them, don't forget the x with them. I just wrote negative x. I could have written negative 1x. Either way it works, okay? Now what we're going to do is come up with the common factors and we're done. So the box method is super quick. I'll put that down here once again. And let me come up with the common factors. 5x squared and negative x. The only common factor is x. 10x, negative 10x, by the way it's a negative sign. Negative 10x and 2, the only common factor there is 2. You can divide them each by 2. But it's a negative 2 because the closest box to it has a negative sign. Be very careful. 5x squared and negative 10x do the vertical common factor. You could take out a 5 and also an x. And over here we have negative, because see this box has a negative. And there's no common factor besides a 1. And now we're done the question, people. Don't forget the 2 in the front. We cannot forget that. And 5x minus 1, x minus 2. And let's go and verify if the decomposition method gave us that same answer. I had to do, look how much work I had to do to get to that answer. Anyway, I guess it wasn't that much work. But anyway, here it is. x minus 2, 5x minus 1. x minus 2, 5x minus 1 x minus 2, 5x minus 1, everything is good. So that means the two videos I've just made are working together in cahoots with each other. One is showing you decomposition, the way most teachers teach it, and one is showing the box method, which I found on the internet a long time ago. I think I saw it on a website called Purple Math, which is a great website. And I think that is the one where I saw how to use the box method. And once I realized it, I liked it and my students tend to like it too. So I offer you this as a choice. And I don't know if your teacher will allow it, but hey, most will. Have a great day everyone and thank you for watching.